Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here and we got a special treat for you. I got Mark Peng here. Mark, you are the founder of Peel Poly. You guys make, as a lot of you out there may know, the Moai 3D printers, yep. the SLA 3D printers. Yes. Um, and you've brought here an early version of something you're just announcing. Uh, this is your new SLA printer. It's, what is it called? The, the Phenom, right? The Phenom, yes. Uh, so it it's a, looks like a very large printer. I know the, the Moai 200 was also a very large printer yeah. as well. A lot of fans out there use it for costume making, prop making. What's different about the Phenom? So uh, Phenom's our third generation uh, printer and use, it uses the uh, what we call the MSLA uh, printing technology. Uh, basically what it does is that it has an LCD panel um, and uh, LED light sources under the LCD panel um, to create an image in UV light and the UV light will cure the resin and so the printing now is done by layer per layer all at once instead of uh, using the laser curing uh, path by path. Right, right. So a lot of people out there may know about the fundamental differences between like an FDM printer and an SLA printer. FDM, you're melting plastic, extruding it. Right. SLA, you're curing resin that you're pouring into a reservoir, like you said, layer by layer. Right. Differences between a laser um, SLA printer, which you guys still make in the MOI, right. and an LCD, uh, because you're not going path by path, you're using a panel. Right. right. So what is the LCD panel you're using here? Or how big is it and what's the, the resolution? So it's a 12.5 LCD uh, four, uh, panel with a 4K resolution. Uh, the pixel pitch is 72 micron. Um, and so when you're printing the full size, it's actually the same speed as you were printing something very small. Mm. So and that's a big advantage for a lot of uh, 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 creators because they can now print big and they can print it much faster than before. You're doing basically one frame at a time, one whole layer, right. and the only constraint you have is how long the entire layer takes to right. cure, peel, move up your z-axis and move down. Right, so the height of the print is really what determines, and the exposure per layer is what determines mm. the whole overall print time. So the exp I want to talk both of those things, right? Uh, the exposure, because not you can't just get, find any LCD panel, put it in there, you're looking for certain qualities of LC that make it good for capturing and passing through the, the UV light, right. right? So what's the source of the UV light and what do you do to make sure that there's no diffusion and that you're getting as many of those 4K pixels as possible? Okay. So um, be, be, un, underneath the LCD panel, there's a, a large LED uh, array mm. that's, that's, that's sent, that's, um, uh, that shines the UV light uh, at four or five uh, nanometer. Um, um, because um, each LED is kind of uh, separated, there's a distance, um, the light is not as evenly as you would like. Now for a good printing quality, you want the light to be evenly distributed. So some of the techniques you, you want, you, we can you, we deploy is using optical films um, and uh, optical lens to kind of make the lights more even uh, and then uh, create a very smooth surface when you print. I think the analogy of like a monitor, like a LED TV, yes. right? You know, a lot of those LED TVs have have a LCD panel, right? right. Which has a resolution, has a contrast ratio, uh, has a pixel density, right. uh, and then behind it is an array of a backlight, right. right? And then you can have you can you are choosing as a manufacturer how dense to make that LED backlight, whether you're putting right. you know one per every inch, one per every couple inches. How do you choose that balance? Um, between cost and density, and that's that's a very good question. And picking that in addition to what we call a diffuser, which mm -hmm. is on top of the uh, the LED to the uh, LCD panel, that kind of determines how the light is distributed. Uh, the key decision point would be how much heat you will generate. Mm -hmm. So if you have more LED, uh, uh, you know, each one of them, if it's close, if you have a lot of them and they are packed closely together, it's going to generate obviously more light, um, and so it will be more even, but, it might, uh, but LCD usually cannot handle uh, temperature over 60 Celsius. Right. So if you have too much of that, it might cause problem for the lifespan of the LCD panel. And that's kind of where you have to think about that when you design a printer like this. Right, so you've chosen an array of LEDs and using things like, uh, like lensing right. to help balance it out so you don't get, again, going back to the TV analogy, you don't get hot spots or backlight bleed, exactly. or that kind of thing. Yes. So it's when, when that UV light hits the LCD, it's as even as possible right. and it's not too hot because you want to, want to burn out the LCD. Right, and you also have to think about the distance between the LED and the panel. 
because the farther away those two are apart, uh, the more en light energy you lose. Mm -hmm. And that means longer exposure time. But if you keep them too close, then all the heat is going to go straight to the LCD panel. And it's going to cause problem with uh, printing as well. I mean, it sounds like heat's a big consideration for this type of printer as well, something that wasn't as big a factor in the Moai is when right. using a laser. And so I do see their fans yeah. and, and you um, have a, a big heat sink in there. It is. And, and we got some pictures for you guys. And um, when, we, when we were chatting, we are talking, this was like, sounds like almost like a gaming PC. Yeah, when yeah, you turn yeah. around, there's uh, five fans in there. Um, and I think that's really all, I think I, I, I would say a majority of design decisions how to run the LC, LCD LED uh, mm. efficiently and run their core. Right. And then because you make that analogy to the PC, the gaming PC, then there are opportunities in the future to do different types of active cooling. Right. Uh, active cooling, uh, I think uh, things that we'll see in gaming PC will be uh, uh, liquid right. cooling. So ah. that's one option. Uh, the other option down the road might be using some kind of like a semiconductor, like an AC conditioning, mm -hmm. air conditioning. Mm -hmm. Put and a compressor kind of in there. And blow, and blow a cold air into it. Yeah. So there, there are ways that we're looking at to, um, to uh, improve the cooling down the road. Um, and so that's one reason why we designed this printer to be modular. Mm. So we can actually swap out um, uh, upgrade units in the future. Mm. Okay, so let's move closer up to the stack, past the LEDs, and then you have a layer of optics. There's a layer to, uh, to filter out um, IR, so right. you're just capturing UV. Right, blocking uh, out some of the heat, yes. Yes, and then you get to the LCD panel itself. It's taped down, of course, because that is a, it's a consumable. It like, is. So what's the lifespan of this LCD, and what will it take to replace it? How much will it cost? So for uh, this type of LCD, the typical uh, lifespan is about three to 500 hours. Mm. Um, and now when you print, you want to make sure there's no debris left over in the vat, so it doesn't create any pressure point. Um, and you also kind of want to print within the recommended parameters we've given to you, so that the resin doesn't get heat up too much during the printing. Um, and that way, your LCD panel have a longer lifespan. Do you have sensors in there for, for temperature to make sure that it's, it's not overheating, it's not diminishing? We do, we do have a sensor there, kind of check the fans and you know, trigger them to, mm. to go into overdrive and or, or letting you know uh, it's overheating. But you do need to do a visual inspection, no debris, yeah. because that can add pressure onto the panel, which can then damage it. Yes, um, and I think as long as you would stay within the, uh, the recommended parameters, and also have another resin in there to add kind of like a cooling on the top, Yeah. Uh, then, then you should be okay. You don't want to print like very little resins, then um, it gets heated up pretty quickly. How much will it cost to replace that panel? Uh, the, the, the replacement cost is uh, 99 US dollars. Okay. Yep. And, and you said that's about 500 hours right. or so. Now again, the time is a... It's a, a, it's a wide variance, yeah. Right, right. Uh, we have one that's running over a thousand hours. Oh. Right. And there's another one we accidentally put, have something left in there and then it was damaged uh, about 200 hours. So, so that's something uh, we, were, we were, you know, user guide, we kind of, we kind of we laid out how the users can approach the situation like this and mm -hmm. make sure their LCD panel lasts longer. I mean, because one of the benefits, it seems like there's a huge volume here. It's a very big uh, bed at 12.5 inches. It goes very tall. You said it takes about a day to go from uh, zero to, to, to about, max? To about 30, 30, 36 centimeters. Okay. So that's one day. Um, now, um, now, you may sound so slow for people who don't do a lot of 3D printing, but yeah. it's actually very fast right. uh, for this size of printers. And I think um, that's actually one of the biggest advantages for uh, users who are actually printing for professional application because there's deadlines they want to meet. Mm -hmm. And this kind of saves them a lot of time, uh, both at printing, also at the post processing end, because now they have more time to. Um, you know, sometimes they have to send the, uh, um, you know, send and paint the prints uh, yep, for yep. the clients. Yeah, and just thinking about, you know, some background napkin math here, if we're talking about 24, 25 hours for a full volume, and you can do 500 hours, you can basically do 20 prints at the full volume per, per LCD. Right. About there. Right. Um, and then above that, of course, you have the tray. This is where you, all the resin, the reservoir where the resin sits. What's the capacity of, of that? Uh, you can do about two kilograms in the resin. Okay. Uh, in, uh, you know, without, without revealing in the tank. Um, and we're looking to build a, um, an external, uh, kind of external tank. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, has a sensor that you can auto refill. Mm. But otherwise you're keeping an eye on it and you're just 
pouring the resin in, about right. four of these, you're, and you want to keep it full because it also acts as uh, cooling. Right. Well. Um, so the best way is actually you, you have a little bit in there and you have the plate that comes down, and that way then you pour more. That mm -hmm. way you know exactly right. how many you can yes, put the in there. Yes, the with the displacement. Right, yeah. if you have put too many, sometimes some user will, what will happen to some users is that you will actually yeah. Overfill, yes. and that's a messy situation yes. Yes. to yes. clean up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the bottom of that reservoir, there's also a film to help with the peel. Right. right. Uh, can you talk about that and how that sure. is consumable as well? I, I think one the one of the biggest challenge when de developing a large uh, uh, MSLA printer is the peel force. So basically, we're printing upside down, and you when you peel, you can think of it as you know pulling something away from a tape, um, and you know. What we did was we, we developed a, a special processing on, over the, uh, the films. Uh, the films we use is uh, FAP films, which is the um, uh, same as Teflon. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's a Teflon film, but we create a, additional processing on top of that, so you peel easier. Mm -hmm. So you have a much higher print success rate, and you can also use a smaller support. That that, what that means is that you, you will uh, waste less resins on support, and also creates a smaller points where it's easier for you to clean. Let me see examples of that here. This is basically right off the right. printer. In fact, all of these you told me were right off the printer without any finishing, so no. you get a sense of you know what yeah. those print lines look like. And this is actually uh, just default setting. We didn't, you know, we didn't, this mm -hmm. is default setting using the software Chi2 box, and we didn't, you know, create any like heavy, heavy base or heavy trunk to just, you know, uh, make it work. I still on the, the bottom of the uh, the reservoir where the film can be replaced, you just have a bunch of screws right. and then it's just pulled tight Put, on the edge? Yeah, it, um, so the way we set it up is that you, you just you have to lay it down, you know, just prefix holes, you can tighten it. Mm -hmm. Once you tighten the screws, you automatically tension the films Got it. to the predetermined uh, forces. And that's that's what you want. You, want, you don't want to over tighten or over loosen it. And that gives you the best results. And then the rest of the printer, really, that Z axis, you know, that screw, the step rotor, it's all kind of the same type of technology you have experienced building with the, the past printer. It is. Uh, we do use a much uh, heavy duty uh, Z axis. You can see the movement uh, is very steady. It's a bit slower, but it's very steady. Mm. And we actually intend for our users to use the full value of uh, 40 centimeter build, build height. And then the plate easily unscrewed, you can yep. remove it, and then peel it off and then cure it. Yeah, and because we're able to reduce a lot of peel forces, we could use a full uh, solid plate instead of portfolio plate. Mm -hmm. um, and what that means is that you can get like a very clean bottom. Clean yeah. bottom, yeah. You, don't, you wouldn't get like a little spots here. Yes. You have to send yes. it off. Yeah, yeah, no perforations there. Uh, and then uh, you can see your files over software is the same as the Moais, is, is that correct? Like well, well, you've seen the Chidu box that come that, that's um, that's um, with the firmware. So uh, we found that to be very popular with the uh, MSLA uh, printer users. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go with that, um, and that that kind of helps us to shorten the development times and also make this uh, very user friendly for a lot of people. A lot of users who are already using LCD printer but looking to go bigger. Right, right. Uh, it's USB, it's Ethernet, uh, no Wi Fi in here. It is a really short development time because the MOA, you guys just announced at the beginning of 2019, the 200. Yeah. And, and you guys keep putting out new printers pretty quickly. Yeah, so we, we've been actually looking at LCD printers since uh, last, uh, last summer. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of looking at a good price point, an entry point for us to go in. And I think our ex you know, the ex development expense we got from MOA 200 allow us to actually figure out how to deal with that peel force well, mm -hmm. and we just apply that, and that was able to help us shorten the development time. You said there's gonna be upgrade potential, uh, not only potentially for the cooling, but the, the LCD panel itself. Right. Is that something you might change out? Yeah, um, so uh, down the road, uh, if we found uh, a, a panel that has longer life, even longer lifespan, mm -hmm. or even higher resolution, or, or some combination of advantages that we can actually replace that. Yeah. Uh, now, it, it does not work with every single 12.5 LCD panel because mm -hmm. each panel has a different uh, layout, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we could make it work for uh, some of the 12.5 uh, panels. Mm, that's very cool. Uh, and then, so this is shipping this fall. What's, uh, what's the pre-order and yes. uh, pricing and, and uh, shipping time for this? So we are uh, we're announcing the product on October 1st. Uh, we'll start taking pre-orders online and also at our resellers. Uh, and we're, we're planning to ship uh, October 15th. Wow, that's very soon. Yeah. That's very cool. We'd love to get one to test and do some big prints. Yeah. We have some friends of ours, Broken Nerd, designed this. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it's a beautiful print. But thank you so much, Mark, for bringing the Phenom here for us to check out and do a preview of. And uh, we can't wait to, to review it. Thank you for the time.